I've been researching gender and development for seven years now, and much of my initial work, including my doctoral research, focused on efforts to address sexual violence in India. I'm particularly interested in non-carceral and especially abolition approaches to ending sexual violence. My work builds on decolonial, postcolonial, black and queer feminist movements and scholarship. I'm currently most centrally working on a project called Sustaining Power, funded by the ESRC, that studies when, how, and why women's struggles succeed in retaining power and sustaining their gains against backlash. Uh, and this has a focus on South Asia um, explicitly. Beyond super, I hope to build on this work to look at alternative conceptual vocabularies of and approaches to justice through a post-colonial feminist lens. My interest in gender and development really took root in the immediate aftermath of the gang rape and murder of Jyoti Singh Pandey in Delhi in December 2012. I was particularly alarmed by some of the dangerous and quite regulatory measures implemented in the wake of this tragedy um, under the pretext of protecting women. So this served as a call to pay really close attention to what is done in the name of women and in the name of feminism in India and beyond. Some of the most pressing challenges confronting gender justice now come as much from within the movement as from outside of it in some ways. On the one hand, of course, we're escalating, we're witnessing escalating backlash from new and persisting forms of authoritarianism, religious fundamentalism, neoliberal orthodoxy, ethno-nationalisms, racisms, and persisting coloniality. But at the same time, those of us working towards gender justice must also reckon with the deep fault lines within our movements around issues of the definition of women, the role of religion, the importance and difficulty of attending to intersecting marginalities, and many such deeply polarizing issues.